Hi, I'm CC, and I finally managed to make a T-junction I'm super happy with for our automatic ticket-based rail network, and I am so excited to show you. So for those of you who are not familiar with the automatic rail network, basically it's a project my friends and I have been working on for about a year and a bit now, maybe even two, and this is the latest addition. We finally have a really nice T-junction that we can use that is super easy to build and very like compact. It's, it's completely flush with the rail on top, which means it's really nice to try and build it into your uh, rail networks. If you want some more information on the rail network as a whole, I've made a playlist in the description that will include all the videos I have done so far on the rail network, but I'll still give a quick demonstration of the system and the general concept. So the basic idea is that when a minecart goes over it with nothing inside it, it will go to the left, but if you were to put in an item, in this case this iron nugget I've nicknamed A, and then push it over, it will turn to the right. So we use these minecarts with tickets inside to basically tell the rail system which way to send you on your travels. And this also works with full sets of trains. So you can keep sending as many as you want and it will never stop until the last one goes by and then it will reset the system. So before we get into building, I'm going to do a quick breakdown of the components that we will be using today. So I don't need to explain them later when I'm actually building them. And the first one is going to be this little purple circuit here. This is the item sorter. This will basically take out the tickets from the carts, but only if they match the ones that are in here. When this does, it will go down here and toggle this crafter, which has an iron ingot in it. If I quickly just demonstrate that. When it goes through, it will put the iron ingot into the crafter in front of it and turn it into nuggets. And then those nuggets will get read by this comparator and go into this target block here, which will switch this track. The thing is that track will then stay open for as long as will ever, really. It won't ever turn back. Not until a minecart goes over this detector rail. When a minecart goes over it, it will power this pulse extender just beneath it, which will unpower this torch here. And then once a minecart passes by and it leaves the detector rail, it will slowly unpower until it repowers the torch, which will activate this crafter here, resetting the system back to its default state. So the original designs of this used to use droppers down here instead of crafters. But the reason we got rid of them is that droppers have this effect called bud powering. I won't go too much into the specifics into the into the the specific oh, I can't say that word into the specifics of how it works. But basically, droppers can sometimes get powered when you don't want them to get powered from redstone that doesn't look like it should be powering it. Like for example, this redstone here. If that was a dropper, it would be being powered by that redstone and it would break the entire system. But luckily, crafters don't have bud powering which means that they are a lot easier to fit into your systems a lot more organically, meaning we can actually have this sort of toggle circuit integrated into the design. So that is why this is a crafter and not a dropper, even though crafters are more expensive. They're just way better for this specific purpose. And I think that's pretty much everything I need to cover. So let's get into the tutorial. So here is the shape of the T-junction. This one here will act as the straight main line, and then here we'll have the offshoot. So from wherever you want your offshoot, just go out by two blocks on either side, so you leave this sort of three block gap in the middle. Then from here you want to add in your rails in this sort of pattern, like so. Then add in a rail facing this direction, and then two on either side in each of those four spots. So something I should note is that I'm going to be making a left-handed system, which means you will always be on the left-hand side of the rail. But if you want to have a right-handed system, then all you need to do is just flip the redstone as I show you it. So let's start by doing the offshoot side. First, we want to extend out these andesite bits here by a bit, then add in two rails there, one detector rail, a regular rail, and then finally on this last one, we want to add in a hopper facing that way to the middle, and then add three more blocks, put on a rail above the hopper, and then just some powered rails here. The powered rails aren't entirely necessary, but they are a good way of getting your momentum up when you go into the T-junction. You can also power the uh, powered rails from beneath like that, and it won't interfere with the redstone. So from here, we want to get in the redstone for this segment here. So underneath, I want to place down a barrel next to here with a hopper facing into that barrel. Now, this barrel will be used for storing any used tickets from the system, but I can show you a few alternatives to that uh, near the end. Then on the inside here, place a block on the bottom hopper and then a comparator coming out of the top hopper into this block here. 
This block that it's facing into has to be solid, by the way. Then underneath, we want to place down two bits of terracotta, break the top one, and do the same here and here. Then redstone dust on top of both of those. Then we want a crafter facing this way, with another one facing directly into it. Then on top of that crafter, place down a repeater, going into a block, with a redstone torch underneath this hopper here. And finally, in this crafter on the edge, we want to add in an iron ingot. Now this can be any item that you can craft in and out of. So this iron ingot will craft into 9 iron nuggets and then craft back those 9 iron nuggets back into an ingot. So other items like this are gold ingots or blocks of any of the emeralds, copper, stuff like that, or maybe even slime blocks. And that is the whole item filter sorted. So next let's build the pulse extender. So from here I want to go underneath this detector rail, put in a block down here with a redstone dust on top. Then place in four more blocks in these spots here with a block up here raised up from the rest. Then have a comparator facing into that block and a comparator facing the other direction. Then some redstone dust in these two spots here. Then place down a redstone torch facing this other redstone torch on the same side as the raised block. Then underneath place down a block here with redstone dust on top. Then you have two options. You can either use a target block or you can use a regular block with a button underneath the pulse extender. Basically any way of getting this redstone dust to be in a straight line. If that wasn't a straight line, it would interfere with some of the redstone that will go next to it, and you don't want that. Then the final part of the module is just put a block against this crafter here, then a block down here, another one there, a comparator facing into a repeater, Finally, two blocks in front in this sort of shape with redstone dust on there and there. And that is actually the whole module. I'll get into filling up the hopper with tickets later, but for now let's just focus on getting all the redstone in on the remaining two sides. So over here on the straight edge, there should be two rails already placed. Just add in a detector rail, a regular rail, and then place in a hopper facing the center, like so, with a regular rail on top. Then you can add in your powered rails just like over there. While we're at it, I'm going to add in some rails over here, just to even it out. Then we want to do the same on this side, with two rails here, detect the rail, regular rail, and then a hopper with a rail on top, and then your powered rails. And I'll put in these rails too. So now we want to get into doing the redstone underneath these two segments here, but it is exactly the same as building this module, just rotated to fit the areas. Just use these hopper and detect the rail as your landmarks, and it should be exactly the same. So I'll be right back once I've done that. And here we go, all of the redstone is nicely in. Just make sure you don't forget to put your iron ingots in the bottom crafters. I often forget to do that. So these are exactly the same. The only difference is that I've color coded these lines just so it's easy to see later on where they are going. So now we just need to get into programming the rails and connect them up to the modules. But there's one thing I should probably mention before we get into that. Rails can be a little bit weird because they are directional, which basically means that depending on the orientation that you place them, they can do different things. So if I place down a rail here, it will turn right. Over here, it will turn right. But if you're over here, it will turn left. And over here, this will turn left as well. Now, the reason it does that is basically rails will try and pull towards the south and the east. Now this can be kind of confusing when it comes to redstone as here if I power this rail it will turn left but if I power this rail over here it will turn right. This does make redstone more consistent when no matter where you build it in the world but it can be a little bit weird if you aren't used to it. As a visual guide I have added in these gold blocks to signify which rails we want to be paying attention to as these three rails will be the ones that we are turning to go to your de designated destination. The other three rails that are curved don't matter, they will stay the exact same so you don't need to worry about them. So there's different ways you can figure out which way the rail will go, but an easy way to know is just go underneath, place down a target block here with a redstone torch. And you see that that rail has now switched, which means its default state is that way, its powered state is this way. Now we want this rail to be facing this direction, when the T-junction is idle. So this is actually the correct orientation, we don't need to make any changes here. Then, for this one we'll do the same, put down a target block beneath with a torch on top, and that one has switched as well, which is correct as well. Then finally we have this one over here, put in a target block, put in a torch, but you'll see that this one doesn't switch. And the reason for that is because its default state is that way, but its power state is that way. But the thing is we want it to be facing that way, so to get it to do that, all you need to do is just put in a torch here, block, 
torch and that will cut it into an inverted state. Now doing it like this does work but it doesn't fit in the footprint of the rail so if that's something you're worried about I'll show you a cleaner way of doing it once we get into the wiring. Now this is a bit of an odd track layout so it's a bit hard to look at and understand it's less intuitive than the roundabout I admit perhaps but it is way more compact and a good way of testing if you've done it correctly is to go over to one side and just push the cart and if it goes forward then you've done it correctly. Yep, there we go. And then do the same over here and it should go directly forward. Yep, there we go. So that these rails are all in the correct position. If your minecart does anything uh, but go straight forward then one of your rails is facing the wrong direction. So now we need to link up these modules with the track switches. And let's start with this one here on the right because it is the easiest because all you need to do is, uh, is, is that. There you go, that's, that, that's it all wired up. But if you need to have your torch inverted, all you need to do is just put a torch on the side, yellow block, and then torch, and then it is now inverted, but mine doesn't need to be, so let's just put that back. And now to do the one on the left-hand side, it is pretty simple too. Just have your blocks down here, and then redstone dust on top, and that is now wired. But if you need to have your torch inverted, you have to do it slightly different. And what you need to do is just place a target block against this block. This will curve the redstone into the target block. Then put a redstone torch here with a block on top. And then finally a redstone torch here. That will invert the redstone torch and also keep it flush within the uh, the rails uh, the footprint. And then finally we have the blue line. This is the weirdest one as if you want to turn to the right, you would have to first turn this rail and this rail. So to wire up the blue line, if you don't need to invert your torch, all you need to do is just run a line of blocks along this way and in a block here, and then just have redstone dust on all of those spots. But if you need to have this torch inverted, all you need to do is break out this corner, place a target block, break out this block here, put a regular one and then a redstone torch, and that will turn the rail the correct direction. Then to wire it up, all you need to do is just break out this block here, bring it down by one and then put in some redstone dust on top and that will be all wired up for you and that is the redstone all sorted well there is actually one more step you can do but i'll show you that in a sec once i've gone over tickets so when it comes to making tickets you can use any item you want but i personally like to either use paper iron nuggets or recently we've been experimenting with banners but banners are a little bit more complicated so i'll get into them in a video of their own so for now, let's just focus on nuggets and paper. And basically all you need to do is just name them. Anything you want. It could be just the letter A, it could be a whole word, it could be Craig, whatever, whatever you feel. As long as every ticket has its own unique name, they can be called whatever you want. So for the sake of demonstration, I've made some tickets named A and some tickets named B. Now the reason that I've made two sets of tickets, even though there's three filters, is that those two filters over there will actually share a ticket as both of their desired locations are the same. As you want to base the tickets on where they're going and not where they're coming from. So to program your filters, all you need to do is just grab 22 of your ticket and then put one in each of these slots with the remaining 17 in the first slot. And that is it programmed. So I have programmed this one here to be A and I'm going to program the other two to be B. And then we can do a demonstration. So now let's do some quick tests to make sure it's all working. So without a ticket, we should be going left by default. But then with the ticket A, it should turn to the right. Yep, perfect. And it should reset. There you go. Then for this one, it should be with no ticket, it should go straight ahead. Correct. And then with a ticket, in this case B, it should turn to the right. There we go, both tracks switched, which means it's all correct. And then it should reset and the back to normal. Perfect. And then finally, we have this one over here, which should do the same. Go forward without a ticket. But then when you have a ticket, in this case B, it should turn to the left. It works. <laughs> I was kind of worried that one. And it's all well and good to leave it at that point. But there is one more thing you can do to really customize your rail experience. So let's say you had a station over here on the offshoot. And then you had one station over there. But in that direction you had like 70. Like there was loads of stuff to do over there. So you'd be taking trips that way all the time. But because this junction defaults left. You would end up going that way and require a ticket to go right every single time. So even though you're using that way way more often. 
you're having to use way more tickets unnecessarily. So what we can do is actually change the direction that this goes by default. And it's pretty simple to do with this design. This is my favorite aspect of this design. I absolutely love it compared to the old designs. So before to do a default direction, you'd have to have these long reset lines and cut off lines and all these awful, awful, so much bulk. And to do it on this design, all you need to do is just add a block underneath this raised pulse extender with a dust here and then a comparator set to subtract mode. And that is it. That is now fully programmed to go right by default. So let's just quickly do a test. So if I put in a minecart here, it will go to the right. But now if I put in a ticket, it will go to the left. So basically we've just inverted the whole system with just a single comparator. Oh, it's amazing. It's so much better than the old design. I love it. And the way that this works is when a minecart goes over this detector rail, it will power this pulse extender, which will also power this resident down below, going into this comparator and then toggling the junction to go that direction. And it will act the same as once it leaves, it will just uh, reset and it'll go back to normal. And the way that you use a ticket to basically reset the system is when you throw it in, it will power this resident dust here, which goes into the side of the comparator, and shuts off the whole system, resetting it back to its default state. And the way that that works is that this comparator is set to subtract mode. So basically this input redstone is a power of 14, while this redstone over here is a power of 15. So this number is taken off of this number, so it would be 14 minus 15, which is minus 1. And since you can't have negative redstone, that will just make it so there's no output at all and just shut off the redstone line at all. And it will just come back on the same way as normal. And boop. And that is the system completely back to normal. So the next cart would just go to the right again. And this will work on all of the other sides. So this one over here would just be doing this with a comparator like that. My only suggestion is that over on this side, when you put in your reset line, or sorry, your invert line, and set to subtract mode, I'd recommend putting a repeater coming out of it just to make sure that the signal is strong enough for long enough. And that's the redstone done. It's all sorted. I oh, I love the design so much. And I can't wait to see what people do with it because it's just, it's I love it. And speaking of that, I actually have a Discord server now where we have a cool rail sharing channel where we can sort of share neat things that people have made using the rail system and also just their own ideas for it. Along with that, we also have some building channels, some art channels, and also just some general discussion channels. So make sure you go check that out. It's link is in the description. Yeah, so make sure you guys subscribe. It really does help. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. I will try my best to answer all of them I can. So I hope you enjoyed. And also a little, little, uh, little sneak peek. There's a new roundabout design. And it's amazing. I love it. Let's go. Bye.